Hey guys, may the force be with you and welcome to another episode of the Lunch Table Podcast with Dylan and Akram. For today's episode, we are diving into season two of The Bad Batch, now out on Disney+. Plus. All episodes available for streaming. Please make sure to support the channel any way you can. But Akram, what were your overall thoughts on season two? I think it's a really strong season. And again, I love the animation. I, I, I'm loving this new direction that Disney is going. Um, yeah, a lot has happened, but let's get started with your thoughts. Oh boy, yeah. Um, this interest, the interesting thing about this season was it, it was going into the mindset of the clones and like understanding where do they go from here, right? Now that they're no longer soldiers in the Republic, where they're, where are they fitting? What is their role in the, in the galaxy, right? I think it was a great exploration of that. Um, the Bad Batch themselves are kind of trying to explore their new purpose or their new identity also because now it feels like they're they're slowly realizing they can do more than just be soldiers they can finally maybe retire and find a life of happiness um <clears throat> overall i think the yeah the season was amazing um it added so much lore like the mandalorian to the star wars uh universe um every episode kind of feels like this very yeah, I'd say like experimental, like they do a lot of their own thing, but it, it has like an overarching story overall. Um, I think uh, this season was, I think they they bumped it up more uh, than season one. I think the the stakes got higher. The They added a few new interesting characters. We got Wanda Sykes as uh, Fee. She's kind of like this um, like treasure hunter. Uh, and Crosshair too. I think his his story kind of, he now he's realizing that the Empire isn't all they're out to be and maybe being a soldier doesn't always mean it's the right thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, I must say this one thing that I don't like about the series is that when they add characters that you don't really care about or just like side characters, sometimes they go to a place where maybe like filler. Uh, did you feel like that happened in this season? Perhaps some episodes. Um, there were a few interesting episodes I did like, but they I could tell they were filler. Uh, there was an episode where they went to like this, like, um, like this mining planet, and there were like these uh, kids that were like it was like a forced labor camp. But it was interesting though. I like the themes behind it because um, it was like about this uh, this this mob boss. He's basically like profiting off these kids and how they're like like kind of like slaves in a way. And we get introduced to this character um, called Benny. And it's cool because like he has like this like tattoo of like an equal sign on his neck. Mm -hmm. But in a way, like not everybody's equal. I thought that was so interesting what they play with. And then some episodes were just like it was just like a fun like exploration, like like Fee. Like I thought she was a great uh addition to the Star Wars. I think she she kind of feels like this Dr. Afro character where like she's an archaeologist, but she's also kind of like a like a thief at the same time. Um, but we got this cool episode where like they went to this planet and there was like this this crystal and once they took the crystal out there was like mm -hmm. this giant like mech thing i thought that was so cool like that the was, design yeah. of it yeah um the zillow beast even made a return like i didn't expect that yeah uh, or at least it was a it was a clone of the zillow beast and yeah and they they explored a lot of interesting topics about like cloning the morality of it and are are clones like property or are they people um, so many great themes in this in this season. Isn't that crazy? <clears throat> um, going back to the tattoo, even if it's filler, even like going back to the tattoo thing, it's like it's interesting because we've seen something like that in Andor, right? It represents something, and I think identity um, in a universe so big, it really helps to stand out. And I, what I love that there's like a theme with that with the clones. And you have a really interesting point that maybe it's kind of like going to sideline this review real fast, but I want you to get to this point because uh, you compared uh, clones in a way um, they're going through the same arc, kind of like uh, slavery or like uh, their own property, right? Yeah, it's like their own kind of um, civil rights movement. And I, li I like that they also brought uh, Senator Chuchi from the Clone Wars too. Um, she's a great character and I like that she has kind of adopted this representation for the clones um because she's like these are still people and they they served a, a higher function for our galaxy and it made me also think of like like how we treat our veterans like in america as well because a lot of them i feel like are so disenfranchised 
Uh, so it was, it was an interesting parallel to kind of like, yeah, like the military, like how do we, where do, where do soldiers go right after they've, they served their time and the clones, especially they were, they were literally bred for war. So it's like now they're, they're caught in this purgatory of like, they're like laborers. And then there was this great episode with crosshair. Like they were kind of like these, these clones on this, um, like abandoned outpost station and they were just they were literally there to just, just to die out um because <clears throat> excuse me my voice is uh fading out but um uh the as we see the stormtrooper program is kind of filtering out the clones and now we see like these they call them tk troopers which are basically the progenitors of the stormtroopers. i thought they look cool on screen too i like their design um and also we get a great episode where uh palpatine makes an mm. appearance as well that sneaky bastard <laughs> um yeah it was it was like he was kind of like forced to come out and you know uh force the stormtrooper program into action um yeah i want to get your thoughts also like what did you think of like that whole kind of like like clones rights like theme oh yeah for sure it's it's we talk a lot about intertextuality and semiotics, and I feel like for an animation on Disney Plus, I'm so glad that they're the Clone Wars for the most part, especially season seven of the Clone Wars was super rich and, mm -hmm. and just dynamic and themes. I really enjoy that they're taking a mature approach and sometimes it does seem like it's hiding. Um, but I think when you have strong themes, uh, they're kind of highlighted if you think about it and it kind of stays with you. And I really enjoyed that in this, se in this season. Um, yeah, but you said yeah. it the best. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's no, that's true. It's like star Wars kind of is, has always been about politics in a way. I mean, look at Mandalorian right now. It's talking about like, you know, the new Republic, how like one regime is just like another regime. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was, it was great to see like this, transitional period right mm -hmm. despite having no jedi in the bad batch well actually there was like that that wookie jedi i thought that was a cool um cameo too but oh, despite yeah. that despite having no jedi in this season it still manages to find a heart that at the star wars you know core it's about family and it's about community and i think it was also cool that you know rex is so involved yeah. uh, he's trying to build this network of like clone refugees i thought that was so great um he's kind of like this like underground he, he kind of reminds me actually of june from um the hammies still mm. uh, with mayday he's yep. trying to uh help these clones that have been disenfranchised and you know find a safe haven them for them um also we get commander cody in this season too i was, I was wondering for a long time what happened to him how cool um, is that right yeah that was awesome yeah, yeah, seeing him on screen. And that was a great episode with, with Crosshair, too. And I think that just kind of added to Crosshair's mindset. Now he's kind of reforming his ways a bit. He he Now, I mean, it's a little too late, but I feel like now he's like reforming his ways and realizing that he did a lot of shit. And he maybe perhaps he even feels guilty about it and realize like this is his punishment now. Um, But yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, well, you know what? I think he's he's also a complex character, and it would be really cool to see some type of redemption arc. It, it's a tough pill to swallow, but uh, maybe they can pull it off. Maybe they can. And mm -hmm. kudos to the voice actors as well. They're awesome. They're really great um, as always. Uh, or voice actor. It's or voice D, actor. D. Bradley right. Baker <laughs> doing half the voices. <laughs> well, uh, so compared to season one, how, how like... Was season one better? Was season two better? What do you think? I, I think season two was a bit better because it, it talked more about like the clones, like having them have personalities. It went into kind of like their mindsets. Um, I mean, they're both kind of in the way like the same. I think animation wise, they really pushed the boundaries. They explored so many new worlds and different, you know, themes in Star Wars. There was a great like like pod racing kind of episode. Um and yeah, well, unfortunately, we lose a member of the Bad Batch in mm. this season. Um, we lost Tech in the last episode. And Omega, for the most part, I feel like she really hasn't changed as a character. I feel like she's kind of like the weakest thing about this this season and in the show in general. It's it's so funny because like she's the most important part of it. Um, 
I don't know. I feel like like she's so like, oh, we gotta stay together as a family or whatever. Right, <laughs> like right. she doesn't understand like like these are soldiers and they have to make these hard decisions. And it's like, especially if you're being hunted by the empire, like you have to make like these very tough decisions and you can't trust that anybody, right? right. Um but perhaps she'll change, maybe she'll she'll evolve as a character. But yeah, that last episode also was crazy because we found out that she has a sister. Mm. named Emery Carr. She is one of the scientists in the advanced science division headed by Dr. Royce Hemlock. Um, I was actually wondering, too, if we would ever see like Dr. Pershing from The Mandalorian Ooh. in this show, too. I think that could be an interesting leeway. Um, yeah, what did you think of that? I don't know. That was great. That was a shock. I was like, whoa! Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think I think that will be probably the main goal in season three, I think that's where it's going to be headed now. I think now it's going to go more deep. I don't want to say deep state because I don't know about you two, <laughs> but it's going to be like deep state with, with uh, the Empire. And that's that's the cool aspect of it. Um, the, it's, it's very thrilling in a sense, right? You don't know what's beyond. Um, and I feel like they're going to make a lot of discoveries that are going to be very horrifying. And uh, it, it'll touch back to the theme of like people using people. Um, and they don't get anything out of it. It's, it's kind of like mm-hmm. an indentured servitude of sorts. Um, and hopefully each interaction they make with these characters, their ideologies will change too. So I think it's powerful. What do you think? Yeah, great points. Um, I'm not sure like where else they can go perhaps. in the f- I, I, To be honest, I only see like maybe one season left for this oh, show. Well, maybe. Yeah. Um, but I could be wrong. There could be more stories I could tell, right? And I don't know. It just feels like this show is fun, but it's, I feel like it's it's overdue its course, maybe. Mm. Um, but it, it it does do a great job of exploring so many themes in Star Wars. Um, perhaps this is a show actually where it can tend to be a little bit more mature or more political um, because it's about you know this kind of harsh uh, era in Star Wars. Uh, probably like similar to Andor as well, um, but yeah, I, I guess for next season maybe it'll just be like the the Bad Batch are regrouping. They'll probably have to save Omega, um, and then maybe they'll be rejoining the Crosshair probably as well. Ooh, um, yeah. But I, I I really wish they would find ways to incorporate Boba Fett in this show. I know. It just feels like this would be the perfect show to have him in because yeah. he's still a clone, right? I mean, Boba Fett has always been like that isolated kind of guy. He's like, he doesn't really, he's like the black sheep of the uh, the clones, right? He's never really identified as like a, a trooper because he, he he thinks of himself as Jango Fett's son, right? Right. But oh. I think just having him in the show could really, I don't know, it could maybe bolster something, right? Sure. And he's like kind of under, still like underutilized. It's really strange. How mm-hmm. underutilized he is. I, I, I would have thought that we would have seen more of younger Boba Fett, but I don't know. That's a good point, though. Hopefully, hopefully, I don't know. Maybe an Easter egg or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe it got so bad that they have to like send Boba Fett or somebody like that after yeah, him. Yeah, because he's, he's still a young guy around this time, too. Mm-hmm. He's still, uh, like, he's, he's finding his, you know, his path as a bounty hunter, right? Because they had Cad Bane in one episode of, of uh, Bad Batch, too. Right, right. Um, and Daniel Logan is so involved with Star Wars, like I'm sure he would love to come back to mm. to revoice Boba Fett. So it, it'd be a wasted opportunity to not uh, involve him in this show. But yeah, um, overall, great show, uh, great season. I think uh, this is definitely one of the higher tier Star Wars uh, products or, or uh, properties. Um, yeah, anybody who's who's new to Star Wars should definitely check it out. But yeah, definitely check out the Clone Wars too because it's so integral. Um, I think the animated series do a great job of like fleshing out a lot of lore and a lot of the characters. Yeah. What would you rate this uh, season? Uh, if I had to rate this, probably 9 out of 10 for me. 99. Close. <laughs> Clone Force 99. <laughs> there you go. I, I would so rate it the same way. Uh, well, great. Everybody, this is our review. Uh, Dylan, why don't you take us away? Well, thank you guys for tuning in and definitely check out our other Star Wars reviews. Check out the, we're reviewing The Mandalorian right now as well. Um, but yeah, check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, as well as Anchor. And yeah, until then, guys, may the force be with you. May the force be with you, guys. See you.